or her shoulders wriggling in a special way that I associate with the spirit of divination. So I said, you spirit of divination, come out of her. And it came out complaining, nobody knew I was here, not even her husband, no one knew I was here. Well, you see, it was very helpful to get that one out by name because she was then on her guard against allowing it to return. How do you know when it's gone? Well, now, I, this is a question that takes a sermon. But if you are praying for somebody else, you will almost invariably find that when a spirit goes, there is a moment of relaxation. Frequently the head will slump forward, the arms will drop down, there's a kind of releasing of the tension. Then, if another spirit surfaces, the tension will be resumed. Also, I find personally, when I'm dealing with them, that the Holy Spirit in me kind of blows up like a balloon to oppose that spirit. When the Holy Spirit in me relaxes, I usually find that spirit has gone out. See, then when the next one comes to the surface, the tension in me is renewed. Now, there are many other things that could be said, but not in this short space of time. How can you protect yourself from the demons released in others when you're ministering deliverance? You should be in that relationship to God in Jesus Christ where they cannot enter you. And if you're walking in the light and in obedience to the will of God, standing on the scriptures, you are safe. I've dealt with this at length in how to keep your deliverance, so I will not go into it again. But if you are uncertain and fearful, I would not recommend you to try to minister deliverance to others. In an emergency, you may have to do it. But uh, let it only be an emergency. Is there a demon of sleep or laziness? The answer is yes, there is a demon of both. Absolutely for sure. The demon of sleep is mentioned by name both in the Old Testament and in the New. Romans 11.8, the spirit of slumber. And Isaiah 29.10, the spirit of deep sleep. For some people, sleep is an escape, just like alcohol is to others. They can't face life's problems, they curl up in a ball and go to sleep. I know a woman who was delivered from the spirit of sleep, and when it came out it said, I was her salvation. There's a spirit of laziness, very much so. I'll tell you another spirit, and that's tiredness. Many people are tired all day. They wake up tired, they live tired, they go to bed tired. That unnatural tiredness is frequently demonic. Is there any difference in the approach for deliverance of children from that of adults? Well, we had a children's deliverance service yesterday evening. And as I expected, it ended up with the parents getting delivered. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the principles are all the same. The scripture says childhood and youth are vanity. In the spirit, there is neither age nor sex. And many children that grow up in an atmosphere of faith and are instructed properly by their parents are far more mature spiritually than a lot of adults. And so, you've got to use language that a child understands. You can't use long, complicated words that they don't understand. But if you can bring it down to their understanding, they'll probably understand it quicker than a grown-up. I think we proved that. Because I only preached for about half an hour to those children and we had a deliverance service such as you wouldn't have without two hours preaching to adults. And parents, I say again, it's your business to instruct your children. Now, don't make them scared. Don't put all the emphasis on the devil. Never do that with anybody. But don't try and act as if there wasn't a devil and there weren't any demons, because there are and your children are going to have to face them. Can, <laughs> can demons inhabit furniture? If so, how best to rid home of them? Well, as regards inhabiting furniture, I really don't know, but I, I read this question in the presence of a young woman who said, I'm sure there was a demon in my stove when I moved into the new home. Everything I put in it burned. <laughs> but she said, after I prayed over the stove, I didn't have that problem anymore. Now, demons do locate in places. You see, amongst the Africans and amongst most primitive people, there were certain trees which were the habitat of a certain powerful demon. And that is a reality. There's no question about that. 
I also talked with a woman from this part of the world who told me that she had been sexually assaulted by a demon in her home and that it told her that it lived under the stairs. And I really believe she was speaking the exact truth. Uh, I mean, she was not a foolish woman. She wasn't a fanatic. She wasn't the person who went out to being spiritual. She came deeply exercised about her condition and problem. Um, now, here we go to something else. Could you explain the difference between a woman's submission to her husband and her being dominated by him? How do you distinguish the two? Is there a difference when the husband is the spiritual head and when he is not? Well, this is a tremendous question, a vital one and a very important one. Basically, the Bible says a woman should be subject unto her husband as unto the Lord. Isn't that right? Now, I don't believe the Lord ever incites us or compels us to do something deliberately sinful, does he? So, I don't believe a woman is ever subject to her husband to do something deliberately sinful. Do you accept that? Uh, I, I have to be frank here. I've spoken with quite a few married women whose husbands were sexually perverse and demanded perversion in their relationship. I've always told a woman, you are not obligated to submit to that. And almost any woman that does will end up needing deliverance. Of course it makes a difference if the man is exercising his proper place as a spiritual hand and if he is not. But we can't go into that in detail. Do you believe adultery should always be confessed to your partner regardless of when it occurred or the spiritual stage of the wrong party? My answer is yes, I do. I know this embarrasses and scares some people. But I personally believe a lot of people are in mental institutions for the one reason that they committed adultery and could never escape the guilt of it. And you've got to decide which is the worst. But I have seen so many cases of families rescued by honesty that I don't take a pessimistic view. Now, I, there's a lady here this afternoon, I wouldn't in any way indicate, who ran into a very difficult situation through precisely that, confessing adultery. She did it, having told me that she felt the Holy Spirit would have her do it, and I endorsed that. I said, I believe it's right. Well, she certainly had her share of problems since. But in actual fact, I'll have to say in my judgment, that marriage was no marriage at all anyhow. All it did was bring the situation out into the open on both sides. However, I never dictate to anybody, you're the one that has to make the final decision, not I. And as far as I'm concerned, if anybody comes to me in confidence about a thing like that, their confidence will never be violated. All right. Now we can move on to the today's mail. And actually, we've run out of time. I think I'll skim through these and see. Please list all the physical manifestations of demonic presence. In my little booklet, Expelling Demons, I give a list. It may not be complete, but it'll do. Do the same spirits always manifest the same symptoms out of different people? No, not necessarily. They are influenced by the personality and nature of the person. In fact, in different areas of the world, different races give vent to different symptoms and expressions. How do you know the root spirit? That's a good question. Normally, the root spirit is the first one in. Not always. And it is often a principle, first in, last out. Sometimes we get deliverance, but we don't get the root out. And that usually leaves problems. How can you be sure all the spirits are gone? Well, now I've tried to deal with that. Can they hide? Yes, they can if they're allowed to, definitely. What are some of the common families of spirits? Those which would usually be together. Well, I think I've mentioned them, but there are certain that are always related. One group is resentment, hatred, rebellion. Another is loneliness, self-pity, despair, depression, suicide. Another is anger, violence, murder. Once you get in that list, it will go on progressively unless deliverance takes place. Another two that always are related are rebellion and witchcraft. Uh, 
Samuel said to Saul, rebellion is as witchcraft. And that's very true. I, have, I don't think I've ever found a person needing deliverance from witchcraft who did not need deliverance from rebellion. Uh, these uh, cult spirits or these, well, let me put it this way. Witchcraft, sorcery and divination are very close together. Another thing that goes very closely with witchcraft is mockery. And another thing that very, goes very closely with mockery is blasphemy. Those are almost twins. And you will often find when a person is delivered from the spirit of witchcraft, there will be a horrible mocking laughter that comes out at the same time. That is mockery. I can't go into that in detail. Do spirits come out more readily if we know the name? Sometimes. Do you know if it is possible to cast the spirit out of an animal, like rabies? I can't say anything about casting rabies out of an animal, but you probably think me screwy. I know that my wife cast the spirit of fear out of our poodle. I know that for sure. <laughs> of all animals that I know, poodles are the nearest to human beings, and their problems are closely related. <laughs> Uh, logically, if it's possible for a spirit to go into an animal, it should be possible to cast it out. Is it common to have spirits leave with no manifestations? This is a big question. Sometimes there is little or no manifestation when a spirit leaves. But I'm always suspicious. If there's no manifestation, I want to check some other way to be sure that it's gone. Because for so many years, like many Pentecostals, I was fooled with this process which simply, you know, you spirit of stone, so I bind you and cast you out. And there you are. There you are, brother. Receive it by faith. And nothing happened and the person's problems were either the same or worse. Now, if you've not been through that background, you may feel differently. But I was in it for years and I'm sick of religious games that don't produce results. Now, I do not say that there are always manifestations, but I'm always suspicious if there aren't, until I've had another way of checking. Sometimes the manifestations are very, very slight, like a little sigh, or just a kind of relaxation. And if you're not watching for them, you might miss them. Is blindness a spirit? Not always, but in the Gospel, in Matthew, blindness is directly attributed to a demon. Do spirits come out more? Oh, we've come out. If a person knows God has forgiven her past and she has forgiven herself, yet there is a fear of it being found out, should she be delivered from this fear? Well, she should certainly get rid of the fear because it's wrong to live in fear. But I don't say that that necessarily demands deliverance from a demon. Does every child of God need deliverance from demons at some time in their Christian experience? Not necessarily. But at the present stage of the spiritual condition in modern America, most people need deliverance. That's my firm conviction. Question based on your comments concerning freedom you have to see.